Okay, have me try this shoe. It has a medial post, a dusted tongue, and a mesh upper. Hey, what's up? It's Caroline the Fleet Feet, and today we're going to be breaking down the anatomy of a running shoe. If you've seen any of our shoe review videos or read any of our shoe review blogs, you've likely come across some terms that maybe you're not familiar with. Today, we're going to break down the six parts of a running shoe that shape comfort and performance. First, let's go over the upper. All of running shoes will have an upper that essentially holds you in place in the shoe. Some shoes, like the Mizuno Wave Neo Wind, have a knit upper, which is a bit more flexible. And some shoes, like the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, have a mesh upper, which is a bit more breathable. The insole, also referred to as the sock liner, is a lightweight foam footbed that rests on the bottom of the shoe, offering more comfort and support for your feet. These insoles can also be replaced with something a little more supportive, like a super feet insole. So which type of midsole is best for you? Think of the old saying, opposites attract. Runners with more rigid arches tend to feel better in a more flexible or neutral shoe, while runners with more flexible arches tend to feel better in a more rigid or stability shoe. Stability shoes use a variety of technologies to help reduce the effects of overformation like the guide rails in the Brooks Adrenaline GTS. Racing shoes often feature a carbon plate, carbon rods, or a TPU plate embedded in the midsole to help propel your body forward so you can break your next PR. When looking at midsoles, you're also gonna to wanna to pay attention to stack height and heel to toe drop. Stack height refers to the difference in height between your foot and the ground, and heel to toe drop is the difference in height between your heel and your toes. Some shoes have a deliberately high stack height, like the New Balance More V4, which boasts a 34 millimeter stack height. The outsole is the bottom part of the shoe that touches the ground as you run. Road running shoes are designed for running on smooth paved surfaces, while trail running shoes feature lugged outsoles that are designed to offer plenty of grip and traction to tackle tough terrain. And the rubber on the bottom of trail running shoes is softer, so be sure to not wear it on the paint surfaces because it'll wear down quicker. Right under the laces sits the tongue, which serves a very important purpose. It keeps the laces from rubbing or adding pressure to the top of your foot. Most running shoes will have a gusseted tongue, which means that it's attached on the inside of the shoe. This ensures that no debris get inside the shoe, and it also helps to make sure that the tongue stays in place. Next, let's move on to the laces. Some running shoes have thin laces and some have thicker laces. Some laces are flat and some are slightly textured. And some laces, like the On Cloud Flyer 4, offer a unique lacing system to help you customize the fit of your shoe. All right, we hope you took some notes. And now that you have a better idea of running shoe anatomy, you'll have a better idea of what to look for when you head into your local fleet piece to shop. And be sure to check out our video, 13 things to know before you buy running shoes. Oh,